many generations of the writing of science fiction stories have very interestingly failed to take account of the development of space colonies. But when one thinks beyond perhaps even the next century, if one thinks beyond to the development of human civilization, not just throughout the solar system, but to stars that are beyond the solar system, there's a very exciting result from the practical existence of space habitats. And that is that once we have proven to ourselves, as we very soon will, the right and best ways to build space habitats for our own solar system, it will be then very easy and natural to think to those stars that are nearest to us. It used to be that we considered that in order to, uh, to go beyond our own solar system, we would have to find an Earth-like planet around a Sol-type star, and you might have to go a thousand light years to do that. Well, you don't have to do that anymore because every star that we can see in our telescopes is a source of energy. A certain amount of trimming of the spectrum just by filters is enough to give us the solar spectrum of Sol, our own sun. We know that we can make Earth normal gravity in space habitats. We know that we can enclose ordinary air, create the exact environment that we need, and around every star, there are vast amounts of material, either in the form of minor satellites or of asteroid belts. There is a lot of material around every star that we see in our telescopes, aside from the double star systems, which may have soaked up most of their, their surrounding material. So it means that we don't have to go a thousand light years away in order, to, in order to go beyond our own solar system. Our descendants, in my guess, of as little as a hundred years away, and I may be too conservative on that, are going to be starting out to the nearest star to settle human civilization around that star as well. We can see then a gradual development of humanity, and not just humanity, but of the flora and fauna that have evolved with us to all of the stars in the near vicinity of Sol and eventually out throughout our whole galaxy. Like all revolutionaries, when we labor to make possible the breakout to the high frontier, it's, we can get discouraged sometimes. We have to be reminded of several things. One of them is that when people put their minds to it, they can make things happen extraordinarily fast. The whole Apollo project was not even 10 years from the start of the concept to the successful realization. Almost anything that's technically within present possibility can be done within a 10-year time span when people set their minds to it. So don't be discouraged particularly by governmental timescales. Don't be discouraged by programs that are announced that are going to take 30 or 50 years to complete. That's the governmental program. That's not going to be the real space program of the future. The real space program of the future, the one that's going to make a difference in human history, will in part make use of some of the infrastructure developed by federal space programs, but very quickly it's going to springboard off those and use the creativity, the hard work, and the ingenuity of people exactly like yourselves, and some of you will be deeply involved in it. Second thing to remember, particularly at this time when the U.S. federal space program uh, has been through a low spell, and when it may seem that the fundamentally right ideas of opening the high frontier are struggling for a realization, is that throughout all of human history, there has been nothing that has ever looked so absolutely rigid, so absolutely eternal as an establishment just before it's about to break apart completely. It's been true in every revolution that you can think of. Rigidity is characteristic of a system which is just about to be replaced by something better. 
And I think that that's going to happen in the space program because of the dedication, the hard work, the contributions, all of the ingenuity that you are bringing to it. You are the people who are going to make it happen. It really is a revolution. It's a peaceful revolution. It's a revolution for the good of everyone in the world. It's not a revolution that's going to hurt people. It's going to help them instead. It's a revolution into which we can all throw ourselves and all of our energies with full hearts. The third thing to remember in being sure to keep up our courage, keep up our guts, and continue to pour on the coal to make it all happen and make it happen on a short time scale is that even the enthusiasts can often be far too conservative about how long things are going to take. And I think the best example of that is Konstantin Tsiolkovsky himself. You may have read his works and you know that the pioneering work of his, the pioneering book which described an early form of space colony said that the human breakout from planet Earth, the very first trip of human beings out beyond planet Earth to the moon and beyond was going to happen all right, but it was going to happen only in the year 2017. The Apollo project beat that by almost half a century. We have to keep that in mind when we realize that almost anything can be done in a 10-year period if we set our minds to it. And that even someone who is as much of a, of a forward thinker, as much of an enthusiast as Tsiolkovsky himself, was 50 years too conservative in setting the date for the very first precursor of the human breakout into space. Think of that and let us all be encouraged and work hard to make it happen and happen fast. <laughs>